Hello, my name is John Miller, and I love building things with Arduino. Today, I want to show you what I believe is the simplest, easiest, and cheapest way to create an Arduino project that has a local user interface. To do this project, we need the following parts. An Arduino Uno, a character LCD with I to C interface, a KY040 rotary encoder, a scrubber knob, and jumper wires to connect everything together. This video has the following sections. First, I will show where to purchase the parts. Second, I will cover the assembly. Third, I will walk through the program. And finally, the demonstration. The total length of this tutorial is a little over 15 minutes. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, feel free to skip ahead. Let's talk about purchasing the parts that you need for this project. There are a lot of websites that you can go to for Arduino parts, but I will show you some of my favorites. Most components that I need for this project I will purchase from AliExpress. I type AliExpress.com into the URL and it takes me to the main page. First I search for an Arduino Uno. Here's one that costs $3.51, including free shipping. Now let's find the LCD. We search for 16 by 2 character LCD I to C. Scroll down through the list, and here's one for 218, also free shipping. Now comes the rotary encoder. We search for KY040 rotary encoder, and right here at the top is one for 48 cents, plus 67 cents for shipping. Man, 67 cents for shipping. That's gonna break the bank. The last thing that we find on AliExpress is jumper wires. Type 20CM male-female jumper wires into the search bar, and the very first item is a set of 40 wires for $1.53 with, you guessed it, free shipping. We go to our shopping cart, and we see that the total cost with shipping for these four items is only $8.37. If you can find another website, that sells you these same parts for this low cost, please let me know in the comments. But I don't think you will. You may be ready to point out that the only reason that AliExpress is so cheap is because they sell knockoffs and clones. Yes, you are correct. These parts often are clones. But in my experience, clone parts from AliExpress have always worked perfectly fine. On a rare occasion, I might get a dud, but when you compare the cost of a genuine Arduino Uno with the cost of the clone, it is hard to justify paying the full price, especially if you need to buy a lot of these parts. The downside with AliExpress is because parts ship from China, you may be waiting six to eight weeks for delivery. But that is something I can live with just by planning ahead. The other website that I really like for DIY electronics parts is Adafruit, and this is where I will go to find the scrubber knob for the rotary encoder. Adafruit is a US-based company, and they have very reasonable prices and excellent tutorials. The Adafruit scrubber knob costs 95 cents, and you will need to pay for shipping on top of this, but it feels really nice when I use it, and in my opinion, this is the best knob for a rotary encoder that I have seen. Okay, now that your parts are on order, come back here when they arrive. In the next section, we will assemble the hardware. Welcome back. At this point, you should have received the parts. An Arduino Uno, an LCD with an I to C interface, rotary encoder, the scrubber knob, and some jumper wires. Now we will put everything together. Refer to this diagram. The LCD is powered through the 5 volt and ground pins. The clock pin, or SCL, connects to pin A5 on the Arduino Uno, and the data pin, or SDA, connects to A4. A4 and A5 are also the I to C pins on the Uno. If you are not familiar with I to C, I would suggest that you do a Google search. In short, I to C is a protocol that allows devices to talk with each other using just two wires. Without the I to C, 
the LCD would need to use six I.O. pins on the Arduino. The rotary encoder is connected to pins two through six on the Uno. Clock to pin two, data to pin three, switch to pin four, plus or five volt to pin five, and ground to pin six. Wait a minute. You might be thinking, I can't do that, can I? Don't 5 volt and ground pins on the rotary encoder need to go to 5 volt and ground pins on the Arduino? The short answer is, yes, I can do it this way. In the code, I will set pin 5 to high and pin 6 to low, which will allow these pins to act like 5 volt and ground. This works because the current draw from the KY040 is less than the 40 milliamp max per I.O. pin. Using I.O. pins for power to the rotary encoder leaves the remaining 5 volt and ground pins available for other peripherals. As a bonus, I can even plug the rotary encoder directly into the Arduino without any jumper wires. Now we assemble the hardware. First the rotary encoder. I connect the female ends of the blue, purple, gray, white, and black jumper wires respectively to the clock, data, switch, plus, and ground pins of the rotary encoder. Then the male ends of these same jumper wires plug into pins 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 of the Arduino. Second, we connect the LCD. The female ends of the green, red, orange, and yellow jumper wires connect to the ground, VCC, data, and clock pins on the LCD. The male ends of the orange and yellow jumper wires plug into pins A4 and A5. And the final, green and red male ends plug into the ground and 5 volt power pins. Obviously, the colors of the wires don't matter. I'm just showing you the colors that I like to use when assembling these parts. The scrubber knob simply pushes onto the shaft of the rotary encoder. You don't actually need the scrubber knob for this tutorial, but if the rotary encoder is ever mounted on a panel, it will be difficult to use without some type of knob. The assembled parts will look like this. The LCD, rotary encoder, and Arduino Uno, all connected with jumper wires. Now I will talk you through the Arduino sketch that runs the LCD and rotary encoder. I would recommend that you download my example from GitHub at the link shown below. If you are familiar with Arduino programming, you can most likely just look at my code comments to see how it works. Most important are the external libraries. You have heard the phrase, standing on the shoulders of giants. That's how I feel when I find good software libraries. The first is the One Button Library by Matthias Hertel, and sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. This library takes care of all the dirty work needed when programming for a push button, things like timing and debouncing. Just attach functions for click, double click, and long press, specify which pin the button uses, and the library does the rest. The second library I need is one called Arduino Liquid Crystal I to C by Frank de Brabander. This library has all the same functions as the standard Liquid Crystal library, but it works for LCDs that have I to C. Next, we need something to read the rotations or detents of the rotary encoder. Now I have read that reliable Arduino coding for the rotary encoder is difficult. I have even seen an example that uses capacitors for a hardware debounce. Well, many kudos to Simon Merritt, who has figured all this out in his instructable called Improved Arduino Rotary Encoder Reading. I won't take the time to explain the details. All I can tell you is that Simon Merritt's code works amazingly well when I use it with the KY040 rotary encoder. Refer to either his instructable or my example sketch to see how it is done. Here is where you specify the I to C address of the LCD. Most I to C LCDs have an address of either 39 or 63. Here you define the number of rows and columns of the LCD. 
Most likely your LCD will be either 16 by 2 or 20 by 4. The sketch has four functions to handle events from the rotary encoder. The rotary left and rotary right functions are called when the rotary encoder is turned one detent clockwise or one detent counterclockwise. In my example, all these functions do is increment or decrement a counter. The rotary click function is called when the push button of the rotary encoder is clicked. In this example, clicking the rotary encoder button will increment the counter by 100. The rotary long press function handles the case where the user holds down the rotary encoder for two seconds. In the example code, this resets the counter to zero. The sketch has an initialized rotary encoder function, which is called on startup to set all the I.O. pins, interrupts, and push button functions for the rotary encoder. It also has an initialize LCD function called on startup and an update LCD function, which is called in the loop to update the LCD with the current value of the counter. At the end of the sketch, you see the setup and loop functions, which are both very minimal. Again, I know that if you are familiar with Arduino programming, everything that I just said could have been learned from looking at the comments in the code. But if you are new to Arduino, hopefully this code overview helps you better understand what you need to do to use the LCD and rotary encoder within your own Arduino sketch. Now that we have the hardware connected and the sketch written, the only thing left is to load the program into the Arduino and see it work. Connect the Arduino to the computer via the USB cable and click the Upload button. If you did everything right, the program will be loaded and you will see the text and counter on the LCD. If you get any errors, you will need to figure out what you did wrong. But assuming you did everything right, you will be able to turn the rotary encoder clockwise or counterclockwise to make the counter go up or down. Press the rotary encoder button to increment the counter by 100 and hold the button down for two seconds to reset the counter. Now you might be thinking, so what? Big deal. I made an Arduino program that can count. One, two, three. Well, the reason that this is a big deal is because by knowing how to use the LCD and rotary encoder, you can make any Arduino project that needs a local readout and a local user input. I have made two such Arduino projects that use the LCD and rotary encoder like this. One project is a Toastmasters automatic timing light. This is a device that has green, yellow, and red lights, which turn on automatically according to a timer. The intent is that as someone is speaking, such as in a Toastmasters meeting, the light will notify the speaker that their time is up. In this project, the rotary encoder is used to select a speech time and to start and stop a timer, while the LCD shows the elapsed time during the speech. Details for this project can be found at autotiminglight.com. The other project and this is the one that I consider my flagship Arduino project, is a robotic xylophone which can play hundreds of preloaded songs from every style and genre. In this project, the LCD displays a list of songs, and the rotary encoder is used to select a song from the list. Complete instructions and details of this project are found at my other website, buildmusic.net. In summary, I really enjoy Arduino projects, and I like them even better when they have a coolness and serve a useful purpose. An Arduino project that is interactive with the user will need some form of local control and readout. I would submit to you that if you are looking for something that is cheap, simple, and easy to put together, you will not be able to do any better than I have shown here. An Arduino Uno with I2C LCD 
and rotary encoder. The total cost for the parts that I have showed you is less than $10. These parts can be put together with no soldering. And believe me, I hate soldering. With the libraries and code examples available, you don't need to spend time making the components work. Instead, you can focus on what is unique to your project. If you are looking for fancy, new, and different, I know that there is a lot else out there. But if you are looking for a user interface that is simple and inexpensive, I believe that this is the best you can find. What you can do with an Arduino Uno, an LCD, and a rotary encoder is limited only by your imagination. Good day and happy making.